We talked about uh, teaching courses consecutively, so ELW 110 is first, 111 next, and so on and so forth. But uh, we do like to introduce things that are in 111 and 112 into the math portion of it. And just to remind you, I know we're feeding you information. We might be talking about, well, we won't, well, might be, we will be talking about transformers today and transformation of voltages. In this part of the class, you, you're just going to have to know the math about it. But it does give you an introduction into ELW 111. And the same information will come up again as far as how transformers work and, again, what the math goes along with it. I do like the concept, though, and I've taught it this way for going on to five years, is when you, and I'd love to hear this back from employers, when you get this information, really, as a professor, how much do I expect for you to retain? You get done with this course, you go to work, how much retention do I expect? 60. Mm -hmm. Huh? 60. 60%? 60 that's, that's close. It's about 50%. And there, there are studies that are going on out there that say, well, if you, sh if you speak it to a person, they're going to retain 50%. And if you tell them to read it and hear it, it's going to be like 60%. If you tell a person to write it down, that, that thing runs up to 70 and 80%. And that's really why I like to have class. But I do encourage you to take notes and, uh, of course, read the notes that I have here. I do record every class. So... Uh, I'll post those out there and you guys can come back to them. But it is great to see when an employer, you know, calls me back and said, hey, uh, I got Lesnick out here and he's been working for me three months. And man, he troubleshooted this transformer for me just by using simple math. And you, and you can do that. And uh, really impressed. Back in the old days when you brought on an employee and he worked for you three, four or five months, uh, you, the impressive part of it was, he knew how to use a shovel and dig a ditch. Nowadays, they want to use brain power on that also. So, without further ado, uh, who in here can give me, in the utility side, what they think a uh, transformer is? Getting at the big white cylinder at the top of the pole? A white cylinder at the top of the pole. Okay. You can chime uh, in. I don't mind guesses. This is learning. It's uh, it takes any imbalance or whatever the the power is and and regulates it to a operating voltage that you know for residential services or something like that that they need. Close, close. Anybody else? Uh, does it take down? It like takes the the voltage coming in, like gives it so it like so a house could use it. So like a normal like so it wouldn't be everything coming. They transform it. It, go, it goes from high direct current to low voltage uh, residential use or whatever. Boy, everybody's really touching on on the uh, Robbie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are all hitting points of it, but uh, I like to be keep it short and simple and descriptive. At the same process, in simple definition, a transformer takes a high voltage and transforms it down to a lower voltage or vice versa. So there are step down transformers. And let's note that right here. Step down, take that high voltage and transforms it to a lower voltage. There are also step up transformers, which takes a low voltage and transit, transforms it up into a higher voltage. So we'll talk a little bit about identification here. Robbie, can you see that? Not yet. Okay. What I have here on the picture, guys, on the screen is a substation transformer, and there are different applications for different types of transformers. And I want you guys to be able to get in the identification process that's going on here. How do I know it's a transformer? Well, I'm going to see if I can get this out here just to do some marking. Go red and a little pencil. All right, you'll notice on this picture right here, I'm going to just draw a, line, draw a red line to it. There are two sets of bushings on a transformer. 
I can tell this is a step down transformer. The bushing on this side is very big, which means it has a higher voltage. And the bushing on this side is substantially smaller. So I have a lower voltage. Bushing size, gentlemen, will tell you if, that, if you have a transformer or not. So I don't know what the actual voltage is right here of the transformer itself, but I can tell it's a transformer just by high voltage, low voltage, high voltage input, big bushing, low voltage input, out. Now, that's a good identifier for you guys to know out there in the field. What the voltage is, I don't know. I'd have to get that off the nameplate of the transformer, but that's a good way of identifying as such. Okay, so that was a substation transformer. Here's another substation transformer. The sizing is, is really going to be applicable to the voltages that are going on here. You'll notice on the left-hand side where it says Siemens, this little name tag right here. On the left-hand side, the uh, bushings are huge going into this transformer. And on the right-hand side, they're almost the same size uh, bushings as the transformer we saw in the previous picture. It's still a transformer. And you can get, this is in a substation again, and you can get the idea of the magnitude of the size of what these transformers can be. Now this is a transmission station transformer. So I'm taking a voltage like 230 kV, 230,000 volts and transforming it down to 115,000 volts. That's a guesstimate right there by the size of the bushings I'm looking at. Okay. Here's a generating station transformer. So that would give you guys an idea of size and magnitude of transformers that are gonna be going out there in the world. I like to show them all. I've seen students that have gone into the industry and worked in generating stations. I've seen them uh, you know, work in substations, all in substation construction, uh, distribution and transmission. So that gives you a good idea <coughs> of transformer sizing. See, I got one more in here. All right, so let's sit on this one just a little bit. Uh, the zoom in, zoom out is way too much. Zoom in. Okay, there you go. All right, so this is your normal, typical distribution transformer. Anybody got an idea of what the 25 stands for? Amps. Go ahead. Anybody else? I'm glad you chose something because you're on the right track. 25 stands for KVA. So let's get a de definition of what KVA is. KVA stands for kilovolt amperes. Instead of writing all the math out on this, <laughs> they just go ahead and put down KVA. Now there are transformers like you saw in this picture right here that run up to the AV, MVA. KVA, thousand volt amp, amperes, MVA, mega volt amperes. So get that down in your notes as to what those stand for. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not engineers and I don't want to hold you back. Anybody that does want to be an engineer, by all means do so. But for alignment out here in the field, what 25 kVA stands for, and this is loose, this is a loose term, it stands for 25,000 watts. Now, if you walk up to a lineman and you say that's a 25 kVA, how many watts will it feed? You're going to tell them 25,000. You walk up to an engineer, an engineer's going to say, well, you haven't factored in temperature, you haven't factored in losses. Yeah, you know, a bunch of stuff that's going on technically, but for a safe term for a lineman, I know I'm able to feed 25,000 watts of power with this. Well, Robbie, you can jump in on this. What does that mean? Well, take this transformer and I'm going to have a softball stadium out there and I'm going to put 25 1,000 watt lights. Will this transformer be able to handle it? Yeah. Yeah. I've got 25 1,000 watt lights. That's 25,000. 
This is a 25 kVA. It's able to have an output of 25,000 watts. So it's right at 100% of its usage. That's all fine and dandy. So that'll give you a good indication. If you see a transformer up on a pole and they all have this number. Now they might have other numbers that are down here as far as voltages and company numbers and all that good stuff. But if you look at one and it says 25, 50, 75, and Robbie, you've got the chart, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, we'll throw out a chart onto D2L. You know that this is able to take care of or feed 25,000 watts worth of power. Right. That's what it's rating is. All right. So let me get my Adobe here. Okay, so how does this hall work? If you'll notice in my photograph right here, and the ones out in the field are almost the same, except I'm using a cross arm. Whoever came up there and said, well, I'm taking an input voltage, like a primary voltage, and I'm converting it to a lower voltage to go into the house, this is the concept that's going on in the process of doing that. I have an input voltage, and guys, from here on out, when uh, Professor V and I are saying uh, 7,200 volts and 240 volts, we're not giving you arbitrary numbers. Those are actual system voltages. So just take it as that and you can use that information. Really, by the picture, I don't know. I'm gonna use a voltage of 7,200. If you can follow my mouse, I go through a switch. There's a fuse out of the switch and down to the transformer. You'll notice the bushings on the top are big. The secondary bushings on the bottom are much smaller. So I have a high voltage input, low voltage output. Anybody chime in there? What's the typical voltage going into a home? 220. 120, 240. 120, 240. 240. Yeah. Yep, 240. 120, 240. So if you follow my mouse right here, can you guys see this okay? When I'm yes. moving my mouse around? Yep. Okay. All right, center bushing is ground and neutral. We'll get more detail like that. I have 120 volts on this leg. I have 120 volts. I can measure with a meter from here to here. That's phase to ground. And I have 120 volts from here to here. That's phase to ground. And between the two legs is 240 volts. 7,200 volt input. This bushing is going to be grounded. It's not showing in the picture. 120, 120, 240 total out. Any questions there? If it's all right, I'd like to make a statement about the, the transformers themselves, just like what um, Professor Shoemaker said about the, um, the transmission of transformers, how it had the bigger bushings on one side for the higher voltage, and on the other side it had the, the smaller um, bushings. Well, this pertains to distribution transformers as well. I came off of a system where <clears throat> our primary voltage was um, 23 kV. Um, Phase to phase, phase to ground was 13.2 kV, 7200 as well, and other parts of our system. So the 7200 volt transformers had a much smaller bushing on top of transformers, whereas the 13,000 transformers had a much larger bushing. Everything's the higher your voltage, the larger your bushings, the larger your insulators. Um, and you can see that like riding down the highway. If you see, you'll notice different um, systems have smaller insulators on top of poles and then maybe a competitors across the road and you'll see they have larger bushings or larger insulators on their side so they're running a higher voltage than than another company would so but bushings uh bushing size matters you heard the statement size matters well electricity size matters with bushings as well e excellent uh input right there <coughs> excuse me you don't know the actual voltage until you either get something from uh, information from the system that you're working on. 
or uh, you can look at the, actually every single transformer's got a nameplate on it, an information uh, plate on it. You can read that and get the information too. In fact, Robbie, why don't you, if you can, pull one up and see if you get your chair. But I knew, do know, by this one, this is, and I'm, this is my guesstimate right here after looking at plenty of transformers. This is probably 115,000 volts by the bushing size. All right, and there's a lot, when I say a lot of transformation here, that's probably 7,200 on this side. So I'm stepping down this voltage by a good amount, just by bushing size. You see how small that one is compared to this one, how large. So I'm doing a lot of step down in this process. But very good information. This not only goes for the bushings that you see on transformers, it goes for the insulation that you see everywhere. So uh, I, I know you guys have been out in the field and you've climbed up uh, on those short poles to a couple cross arms and you've seen the insulator that's on those cross arms. That's designed for uh, being used on a 7,200 volt system. The insulator itself usually is able to handle up to 20,000 volts. Now you want some room for uh, safety purposes. You, you don't want to put 20,000 volts on a 20,000 volt insulator because it gets dirty, contaminated, wet. You, you almost want to double the amount of protection that you have on your system as far as insulation is concerned. Any input on, on that, uh, Robbie? I'm sorry, I was uh, trying to get this name plate pulled up for you. Try it again. That's okay, that's okay. I was just talking about insulator size and actually, I mean, this insulator that you see on the transformer, right? even though I have 115,000 volts going into it, its rating as far as being tested and constructed is probably right around 230, 300 kV. Right. Right. You, you want as much insulation protection as you can get. Right. Exactly. Uh, and, and, I mean, and in the process, be practical, too. We'll talk about money here in just a little bit. Okay. All right, so let me get back to the uh, original picture. So we're back to this 25 kVA. And we're gonna start doing a little writing here on my excellent writing skills. Let me know when you wanna take a peek at that. Um... Yeah, hold on, hold on one second. I'm going to stop share. Robbie's going to go share. <sighs> Can you guys see that? Professor? Yes, sir. On the, uh, right. the one in the upper right is perfect. Yeah. That's a, that's a Howard Industries. There are several manufacturers out there. GE, Howard. Um, McGraw Edison. McGraw, ABB. I mean, there are just several different manufacturers that make these transformers, but to know, and this is very important when you, before you hang a transformer on the pole and put primary voltage on it, you need to check the nameplate to make sure it is rated for the primary voltage that you want and the secondary side as, as well. And you can see in that picture that um, Howard Industries nameplate, it's a 15 kVA. Um, I'm having trouble seeing it myself a little bit, but it's a 7200. That's um, phase to ground voltage, 12470. That's phase to phase, uh, 12240. So we can see that um, pretty much that's a, you own a 7200 system, that's a good transformer for maybe a single residential customer, maybe two customers, two small customers. All right. Um, there's a lot of information all inside. It. And if it's non PCB or, um, or PCB contaminated, a lot of information on that one plate. Good deal. Have a question? Not that, guys. Okay. Go ahead and give up yours and I'll go to mine. Okay. I will talk a little math here. Everybody see my transformer back up? Mm hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, in order for a transformer to work, I'm going to draw on some stuff right here that's going to be going on. Uh, it doesn't matter 
as far as the high side bushings on this transformer, which side do you feed in on and which side do you ground? But you have to have a feed in and a ground. So what I'm gonna do here is just draw on this, uh, what happened to my little pen? Yes. All right, it's just draw on the symbol. This is grounded. Now I'm gonna introduce from the switch, if you remember from the switch, I came out of a fuse down with a wire to the transformer. I'm gonna input 7,200 volts. That's my primary voltage into this bushing. That's the wire that came down just like this. My output, and we're, we're actually just using the same nameplate information as Robbie uh, just posted right there. This is neutral and grounded. My output is 120, 120, and the combination of both of these is 240. So that's how the actual wiring goes in the input and output of the transformer. Now, like I said at the top here, I can come into this area this bushing right here and put 7,200 volts. And I can come over here and ground this side. It doesn't matter which side that you use, all depending on the switch location where you put the switch at. So let's see if we can do a lot of erasing here. Let's see how smart I am. Look at that. All right. So we have a 25 kVA here, which in Lyman terms equals 25,000 watts. Here we go with some math. When doing these computations here, always use the total output of the transformer in voltage. <coughs> so the total output of this transformer in voltage is 240. All right, the total input of this transformer is 7,200. This is pretty simplistic, guys. Take 7,200, uh, excuse me. Yeah, take 7,200 and divide it by 240. It's like 30. 30. 30. Everybody's coming up with a 30 computation, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to draw over on this side. And these are good to draw out even if you don't have a transformer drawing. For every one of these, I need 30 of these. Is that not an assumption? Is that correct math? Yes. All right. 30 times 240 equals 7,200. Did I lose anybody there? Nope. Okay, good. Now here's the fun part. So you're saying you need 30 transformers, correct? We're just doing math here right now. You don't need anything. We're gonna we're gonna throw another value in there and be able to compute on it, knowing by what and you've actually what you guys have just done here is figured a ratio. Let me get rid of uh, this part so we have some space to work. <laughs> hmm. You guys and your great who's yawning? <laughs> This is important stuff. All right, you guys and your great minds have just figured the ratio of a transformer. So you said it was th 30. I'm gonna put a one to 30. Now I'm gonna throw an additional value to this. And this is the, the cool part of it. If I took a measuring tool, an amp meter, and I measured seven amps, going into this transformer, this is amps now, not volts, 
how many amps are coming out of the secondary side? Any guesses? Uh, 210. Yeah, excellent. If uh, this is 7A, if one, if it's one to seven right here, one equals seven, 30 equals 210. Uh -huh. There you go. So I can actually, right now, take a measurement down here. I'll take my amp meter, put it around here. I'll get a seven amp reading. If I took my amp meter and put it around this wire and this wire at the same time, I should get a reading of 210 amps. So you have just figured the ratio of a transformer and know how to compute the input amperage and the output amperage. You want to try a different number? Is everybody up to speed there? This can get kind of confusing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the tables on you guys. I'm still one to thirty. This never changes. That's because of uh, the 7200 240 volts. I'm not going to go out there in the world and change my voltage on this transformer. I'm going to have to change the transformer out. This remains constant. I'm going to take an amp reading off my secondary lines now. How did that turn white? Don't know. All right, right click. I'm going to take an amp reading off these two legs right now, and it's going to be 340. What is my amp reading supposed to be at the top? I'll make this kind of before you start uh, throwing the math into that. On most, if you're figuring down, it's this number times 30. So whatever this number was, was times 30. To go back up, to figure this number, it's just a simple divide it's like 11 point something 11.3 correct so you took 340 and you divided it by, by 30 which gave you 11.3 or some shit 11.3 or some shit <laughs> <laughs> okay that that answer is correct so now you're able to compute both directions, both up and down, as far as the transformer is concerned on amps. All right, any questions there? All right, let me get this one. That. That's a fairly simple one because we're using computations on numbers that are one to something. Robbie, I'm gonna throw a 19.9 in here. Cancel. All right, my input voltage is 19,900 volts. My output voltage is still 240. Now you're gonna come up with a decimal number up here. Divide 19,900 by 240. Uh, you're gonna come up with a decimal down here, sorry. 82.9 82.9 now I know you guys that are mathematicians out there in the world this is a fraction right 82.9 is really if the point nine is actually a fraction we're not going to worry about it don't don't get in your skull so for every one of these I need 82.9 of these amp wise. If I introduce one amp into this transformer, how many amps are coming out of the secondary side? 83. 82.9. Close enough. If you say so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's throw another number in there. I've got 
11 amps of input. How many amps do I have going out? Is it 9, 12? And your math was 11 times 82.9, correct? Yes, sir. All right. And your answer was? 912. 912 amps. That's the same reading you should get down here on your bushings for the transformer on the secondary lines. Excellent. Combined, right? Combined, yes. When you when you say combined, whoever asked that question, I'm, I'm looking down at my tablet, not up. Always, always use the total voltage output and the total amperage output. Uh, there is a way around that. If I was only to use 120 volts and do my calculation, if I was doing it this way, then I'd have to divide by two because I've got two 120 volt legs. Let's, let's not get complicated here. Right, but that being a residential transformer, like all houses feed off two, uh, 240, right? Because you need that for like an oven or a washer or if somebody has a garage, they want to set a welder up in or some shit. Correct, correct. Yeah, some shit. Remember, you're being recorded. Oh, yeah. That's all right. I can edit it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll get a little bit more in depth here. We're still just trying to relate the math. Do remember, this, this 25 kVA, and I've got a 25 kVA out in front of my house, is not just feeding one house. You're going to come down here. Dang it. Dang it. I don't want to erase. I'm going to write. I'm going to come out of here with 120, 120 combined 240. This is going to go to my neutral. And I'm going to go to a house over here. I'm going to go to a house over here. You know, make different connections on this. And my transformer actually feeds four houses. All four houses are going to get 120 and 240. All right. But the total amperage is what we're looking for. And the total output of the transformer is what we want to measure, especially in troubleshooting. Okay. So let's throw a little bit of Ohm, Ohm's law into it. Who's blowing up my phone? Matthew O'Neill Mountain. I can't join Zoom for some reason. Stand by, guys. I'll remind all you guys, and nobody else is listening, the password never changes. H-G-T-C-E-L-W is the password every single time. And I'm not going to post that anywhere else, but all right. So. my eraser going on here so let's talk just a moment like I said before I have four homes connected to this transformer and overall in those four homes this transformer is able to take a capacity of 25,000 watts there he is do you admit him yep okay uh, better late than never. All right. So we said we had a voltage of 7,200. Dang it. Two, zero, zero V. And our output was 240. With these numbers right here, you're actually able to, if you remember that picture before, determine what the fuse size is supposed to be for this transformer. When you fuse a transformer, that fuse is there just like a circuit breaker in your house. You want something there for protection. So it either one doesn't uh, burn up the transformer, destroy the transformer, or two, take out the line that it's attached to. So in essence, what we have here are two numbers. We're always going to use the primary voltage number to determine fuse size. And we're going to run over here to Ohm's Law. Stand by.
But bam. Did everybody write those numbers down? 7,200, 25,000? If you did or didn't, those are the two numbers that we're going to use. So if I want to determine fuse size and fuse, fuses are rated in amps, I've given you two numbers. What were they? 25,000 and 7,200. Right. A P and an E. So take that 25,000 and divide it by 7,200. What's your I number? Three point four seven. Three point four seven. They don't come in point values, and Professor Vermel will throw you out a chart. So the actual fuse size that's going to go in here is a five. And we'll throw out charts later on to show you the fuse sizes that are going on there. So you've actually, with not even hooked up, you've got a 25 kVA transformer, 25,000 watts. By the nameplate, you can see it's got a 7,200 volt input voltage. I haven't even hooked it up yet. What size fuse goes in it? Five amp. A five amp fuse. So you're able to calculate fuse sizes. And I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, when you get out there in the world, you're usually just going to carry a chart around with you in your pocket. And uh, after what, Robbie? Yeah. Two, three, four months, you're going to say, that's a 25. My input voltage is 7,200. I just know that from my system. That's a 5 amp fuse. That's you're right. just going to learn that in the process. A lot of guys I used to work with, the younger guys coming in, they, they always took their hard hats and took a permanent marker and wrote fuse sizes inside their hard hat. <laughs> That'll work too. Yeah. So, I mean, back in the old days, when you hired, and not to say anything bad about contractors, contractors would come into an organization, brand new, brand new hires and whatnot. They'd hang a transformer up on a pole. And usually the guy on the ground fuses the fuse barrel. He puts the fuse in the fuse barrel, so he hands it up to the guy to put in the switch. Well, what size fuse? He's got a 25 hanging on the pole. What size fuse do you, do you think he puts inside the uh, fuse barrel? Brand new guy. 25. He puts a 25 in it, which yeah. is grossly overrated for the transformer. I mean, it takes a five. The higher you go with the fuse size, the more damage is going to occur down here before the fuse blows. So they're actually putting 25, and we had to go behind them. They're actually putting 25 amp fuses in 25 kVA transformers, which is grossly wrong. Right. Okay. Any questions this far? Nope. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, what time is it, Rob? Uh, 9.41. 9.41. Let's take a break. We got more things to talk about. I need to stretch my legs and uh, smoke a cigarette. So let's take about uh, 10 minutes, take a break, stand up, stretch around, we'll come back. Won't be lasting too much longer. All right. All right. <coughs> I
should have. So I have a question. Yes, sir. Are we still meeting at the school at 1230 today? You are correct. Okay. What will we be doing? Uh, today, we're gonna run up, well, maybe have some of you guys run up a pole, uh, hang a hand line up there. We're gonna burn, be learning how to hang hand line. Um, do y'all know what a hand line is? It's the pulley thing, right? Pulley thing, yeah. <laughs> the thing uh, in the bottom. And yeah. then we're gonna take some cross arms to get you guys used to lifting some weights. We won't go very far up, probably about 10, 15 feet or so. Show you guys how to tie off a cross arm. Uh, the guy that's on the ground, how to tie it off and send it to a climber. And then the climber, get that cross arm on his belt, retie it and send it back down. Okay. Cross arm uh, typically weighs anywhere between 40 and 50 pounds with the uh, two insulators, two insulators on each end. Well, that's not too bad. No. There's a great technique as far as the uh, climber and the, man on the ground. So the um, the pulley, is that something you just hang off your belt while you climb, I'm assuming? You don't have to do it. It's not like big and awkward or anything like that. Uh, for all you guys that are listening in there, once you get totally outfitted, when I say totally outfitted, you we do climbing stuff and we'll teach you this. Uh, depending on the task that you're going to use, you're going to carry things up on your belt that you know are just needed for the task. I, I'm gonna, like you're not gonna climb up a pole, change out a cross arm and have to carry sticks or uh, knives right. or anything like that. So you, you, wanna, you wanna belt tool wise and things that you're carrying with you as light as possible. Totally outfitted. I mean, you're using belts right now that don't have anything on them. Totally outfitted, you're gonna add about 35 pounds to that belt. Most of that's the hammer and the hand line. Yeah. But and we will teach you out there on the yard the hand line and here. I love answering questions. Jay Harlan hand line. Let's see if we get some images going on here. Seems like a lot of weight just to come off the belt. It, uh, yeah, it, it, it's something to definitely get used to. You guys that are climbing now and climbing up the pole and that belt is scooting up, you know, from your hips up to your belly. It's got a lot to do with how much weight's on it. Once you put more weight on it, it's going to sit a little bit lower on you, that belt. So it's actually... I mean, the weight really doesn't matter because it's not like you're going that far. You're not running with it or anything. Oh, Robbie, you want to answer that one for me? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to matter. Yeah, weight matters when you climb it. 
especially on your feet. Yep. Oh, I mean, no, I understand. I understand all that. I'm just saying it's not. Um. I don't. I don't think it's that big of an issue, personally. Okay. No, that that's that's cool. I think we're talking to the Hulk here. All right, see the picture that I got up. Yep. That that's a full handline assembly that's going on right here. Let me see if I can start drawing on this thing. And that's a small pulley. Okay. First, we're not going to call it a pulley, okay? Yeah. Uh, when you guys and I know I'm probably going to sound like a smart aleck out there, but when you guys say something, I'm going to say back what it really is in the lineman terms. So when you step onto a crew and you say, "Hey, man, can you get me one of those pulley things with a hook on it?" Nobody <laughs>, laughs at you. Okay. So. <laughs> All right, this part right here that I'm drawing the line to, oh, that's a terrible line. All right, that part right there, the yellow part, that's the block. Okay, don't call it a pulley. This part right here, it's called the hook. That's pretty easy. This right here is the snap, not including the hook. Uh, that's the snap. Now there's a snap side. I like to call it this way. There's a snap side and you'll notice that's the area that's right in here. And there, then there's the eye side. That's over here or the hook side. There are so there are times that you're going to be out there doing stuff on the pole that the lineman's going to ask for the snap side to send them the snap side, or he's going to ask for the hook side to send them the hook side. That's why you need to know the different descriptions of those. Now, this hand line comes with an already made hook. Some of my hand lines right here do not have the hook in them. I don't particularly care for them. Uh, Robbie, you can chime in on this also. Some linemen love them because all you have to do, whatever you want to put or send, all you have to do is put it on the hook and send it up to them. This also, especially when you're working on a congestion pole, that's got a lot of wires and different pieces of equipment on it, that'll hook onto everything when you send it up and down. So that's why I don't particularly like them that much. A lot, a lot of crews have those hooks there, and if you, um, they're good for like pulling up rubber goods and things like that. You can just slip on and slip off. But um, coming from the Duke side, um, when they taught us how to make up hand lines, we actually had two snaps on the hand line. Mm -hmm. um, that's just that was just the method that um, the folks at Duke used: two snaps, and it's got a big eye on each side. And then, of course, you can add that hook if you want me to. Okay, so what's that part called? The hook. That? The block. This, and I'm just going to draw a line around it. The, what do we call it? This, the snap. Snap, snap yeah. right. All right. Snap side, eye side with a hook on it. Good. Now you know the definitions of those. Holy right. thing. Let's see, let's see who's got the uh, construction brain power out there. If I've got a man on the ground that's pulling one end of the rope here, and I'm picking up 250 pounds here with a hook, how much weight is on the block? Half. Anybody else? I'd say 250. Yeah, Anybody 250. Else? Robbie? Actually, wouldn't it be 250 plus the resistance of the man puller? Robbie? I'd say it's 250 plus. 250. <laughs> in the, when you're doing stuff like this and you're pulling weights and ratios, stuff like this, it's 250 of the weight and the force that it's trying to pull it. So it's 250 again. 500 pounds on the block. 
So do remember, and all of these have ratings right here, and you'll see the rating. It's not you can't see it visibly right here. You'll see a rating of the of the block, and the blocks that I use have a rating of two thousand pounds, one ton. So I can actually pick up how much. A thousand pounds. A thousand pounds. There you go. A little math lesson to go right in with the process. Quick okay. maps. Okay. All right, let me get uh, one more thing up here. I'm going to have a question little... for you. Yes, sir. So, so you just use that to figure out how much weight your block could pick up, but how much, so I don't know how to word this. So if something's 250 pounds and I can't pick it up, but then I put it on, on the block and I, I pick it up that way, how much resistance does that block remove for me to pick that weight Zero. up? Zero. Zero. You're on a one-to-one -one ratio. Is that because there's only one block? If there were more, that, it would that is, it. that is correct. Now, they do have uh, – let me see if I can bring up the picture here. They do have <laughs> a method. So if, if you weigh 150 pounds and the transformer weighs 250, mm -hmm. obviously there's just no go. Right. Okay. Uh, the transformers I have out in the yard are pushing two to 300 pounds. Now, they don't have any oil inside of them, so they're actually e even heavier out there in the field. Hold on. <coughs> Snatch. Block. I just know, because we were talking the other day uh, out at class about how uh, you or somebody said something about the test for Duke and how it's like one dude has to, has to pull it up there. I'm like, well, if you have a 150-pound dude, and he's only got a block that's got one pulley on it. How's he going to pull that thing up there? Well, that's where you go to the process of doing multi-pulley, and I'm trying to right. find that's a what picture I was getting for at. <laughs> Excuse me. Rob, I put in snatch blocks, and it brings up singles. Oh, yeah, double block. I mean, I, I, I can – pretty much know what it looks like. I was just, like I said, I just wanted to ask. I was curious. Yeah. Uh, well, here's a good one. Yeah, good questions. There you go. Okay. There's, a set of, there's a set of triple box. So if you had a 300 pound uh, item that you were triple blocking right there, you'd be pulling 100 pounds. Gotcha. Okay. I'll, I'll be totally honest with you. I mean, we don't use uh, stash blocks too much to raise transformers up and down. Duke does it in their testing just to see you know, how capable you are. But uh, my Chevy pickup pulls a lot so <laughs> that, that, that's how it's done I mean we'll, we'll do it from the ground manually and you guys will do it manually but we'll, right. we'll also use the mini excavator okay yeah makes we're, life we're, easy we're gonna do it like it's done out there in the world okay so hold on So a little questionnaire that's going to go on here. I'm going to show you three different items. Oop, my screen just went black. Uh -oh. <clears throat> Good. There you go. Okay. All right. Does everybody see what's up on the screen? Yes. All right. Take a look at the bushings on the top. <clears throat> 
Is this a transformer? It appears to be. Uh, it's got three instead of two. And one looks more like a fuse. A fuse is in a switch. This this is definitely not a fuse. Let me get over here, zoom in for a little, a little bit for you. Is it just a different phase? Okay, you'll notice one, two, three bushings, correct? Correct. All right, are they all the same size? No. Don't worry about this one. That's a lightning arrestor on the top. This bushing. This bushing. <clears throat> and this one in the back, which is hard to see. Are the same size? They appear to be. They appear to be, so this is not a transformer. Okay. So, transformer or not? No. Why not? The bushings are the same size. All bushings are the same size. This is actually a circuit breaker. <clears throat> Transformer or not? Yes. Yes. And how do you able to determine? Two different size bushings. Okay. So the bushings on this side are big, mm -hmm. and the bushings on the left side are small. Good deal. All right. Last but not least. Transformer or not? Yes. Yes. How are you able to determine? Because you told us earlier. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Just by looks. You got a different size bushings. Right. Get my mouse over to it. Bushing on the top of the transformer, which are your input primary bushings. Another kind of hard to see because everything's gray are larger than your output bushings, which are smaller at the bottom. So I have a high voltage coming in, transforming it, low voltage coming out. That's how I'm able to determine the transformer. Okay. Robbie, do you want to get into uh, percentages here or not? Uh, we can. Okay. We'll wrap it up with that. Yeah. All right. So on my screen here, gentlemen, I've got a, a 25 kV transformer. <clears throat> and the description is, as far as being out there and doing, doing construction work, doing troubleshooting, this description of this is kind of vague. What I have is a 25 kVA transformer. And think of this in the process. I, I want to put a transformer up at a location that's going to be cost effective. If all I need to feed most of the time is 25,000 watts, I'm not going to put up a 50,000 watt transformer or a 50 kVA transformer. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, considering one of the 25 kVA, you might as well go ahead and put a dollar to the watt. Probably cost you right around $2,500. If I put a 50 up there and it cost me $5,000 and I'm just really not making any money off of it, I want to be uh, efficient as possible as far as my money is concerned. So I got a question for you. At, uh, today, it, outside, it's maybe 75 degrees. It's a little bit cloudy. Do you think this 25 kVA at my house is being used at 100%? And when I say 100%, if it's a 25 kVA, do you think it's having to output 25,000 watts? No. No, no. I would assume not. I mean, 
my air conditioner is not running. Most of the lights are off at my house. Uh, pretty much, it's, it's not having to output 25,000 watts. It's kind of maybe doing not even 500 watts right now. So <laughs> on rather, what they say, a non-load day or a low load day, it's not actually doing what it's capable of doing. Now, four homes connected to it, even with that, it's still not going to do 25,000 watts. Let's change it to uh, about 102 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Thanksgiving, <laughs> and uh, everybody's taking a shower. Do you think it's being utilized to its 25,000 watt potential on four different homes? Probably a lot closer to it. Yeah, a, a lot, lot closer to it. <clears throat> so what you got to look out for and what the industry has to look out for, well, is I'm going to put a transformer there that's going to be able to feed my four homes, but during peak periods is going to be able to do a little bit more. So with that, every transformer manufacturer has what they call an overload rating. All transformers will go to 150%. Now, when they give that explanation right there, they say 150% for a short term period. That's gonna be my next question. One hundred and fifty percent for short term. The thing that's kind of hard to uh, explain or determine out there. Define short term, uh, Robbie. What short term do you? Thirty minutes, hour. Right. How about you, Noah? I'm gonna go with what he said. Thirty minutes now. Ah, oh, man. Come on, Matthew. <laughs> Playing it safe. Okay, playing it safe. So really what you got to look out for here are what the factors are. Right. Uh, is it 102? Is it uh, humid? Is the transformer underrated already for what's um, all the power usage is going to be going on? And there's a lot of different things to factor. There is no definite X time. What you got to recognize, though, is when you go to a transformer and the fuse is melted out or is overloaded, what it is like outside and what size transformer you have. So you can take different measurements and you can say, well, this transformer is probably overloaded and it's maybe for a short term period, but what will it overload to? That, that's where we're really wanting to head right here. So. If I have a 25 kVA transformer, what will it do for a short term period? Once, a, once again, that's a loose definition right there to take care of that load during a peak time. It would be 37.5, right? 37.5. And there's a couple ways you can calculate this. You can take the 25 change the 150% to a decimal number, 1.5. So let me get back to my word. So I've got a 25 kVA. And the way you convert a uh, percentage is just move the decimal point over to, so I had 150%. I'm going to convert it to decimal. That's 1.5. I'm going to take the 25 times 1.5 equals 37.5. All right. Now that's in KVA. So for the short term time, it'll do 37.5 KVA. Pretty substantial right. if you think of it, that it's mm -hmm. able to do that for a little bit of time during the peak peak uh, load times, peak people using wattage and whatnot. All right, so take a 75. What will it do in overload? Um, 30, uh, 110. 75 times 1.5 is 110. 
It's about 112.5. Listen, I ain't got no calculator, all right? I ain't got no. <laughs> you got Google, don't you? <laughs> yeah, but then I have to switch back from the Zoom screen to Google and like. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Yeah, I mean, if you if you came off that at the top of your head, you you're you're good to go. All right. <clears throat> so now now you know here on out. Well, and you're going to get to ask this question. You're going to have it from us. You're going to have it from the industry. Uh, I've got a 75 kVA. Um, what will it go to an overload? Just multiply it by 1.5. Now, let's go back to, let's see, where was I? So we'll, we'll assume right here that on my picture, I've got that same 25 kVA that's hanging right there. And if you remember before, who calculated the fuse for me? It was five amps. It was five amps, right? Right, but that was at 25. That's, this is where I'm headed, and I, I'm glad you kind of threw that information in there. So you All, triple it since you got triple the, so you go 15 amps. No, hold on. So if you figure 37.5, if, if the transformer here will go to 150%, and it's inherent. You don't have to change anything. You don't have to move any switches. You don't have to do anything different. It's an inherent to all manufactured transformers that they will go to 150% for a short term period. Do I do need to do the same thing with the fuse? No. Hold on. So if this goes to 37.5, my five is still good protection. <clears throat> wasn't that at a hundred percent like that's what we calculated right the... yeah we calculated 25 at 100 percent. we didn't we didn't upgrade that we came up with a 3.4 which actually rounded because we don't make a 3.4 amp fuse to a five and like i said robbie's going to supply uh charts and kvas of transformers yep. so would you think out there in the world that if the transformer inherently is able to go to 150%, what do I need to do with the fuse? Am I going to go change out a bunch of fuses? I would leave the fuse for the 100% rating because then there's no protection for the transformer. All right. Well, guess what? You got a helper right here, guys. Fuse manufacturers realizing that this will go to 150%. Guess what the fuse will do? The same thing. The same thing. Can you believe that? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> and once again, they've got the timing down right in working with transformer manufacturers that uh, for a short term period, that five amp fuse will do what? 150%. Which is? Uh, 7.5. 7.5. There you go. There you go. Good lessons learned here. All right. And they've got, I have to admit, fuse <coughs> manufacturing and transformer manufacturing has come a long way from the old days. All right. So I have one more question then. So I we just you got did more that. Than one. Go ahead. We just did that with the 25,000 KVA, but like <coughs> two minutes ago, we were talking about this 75 KVA. Mm -hmm. So that, that, use because it's you know like three it's twice the size of, or twice the amount of volts then you would just double the size of the fuse like i've mentioned earlier or you go from it, five to 15 because you it, went up that much and yeah i mean what you're working with right there and robbie help me out here if you want to is uh you've got some range going i mean the 3.4 amp fuse for a 25 we don't have a 3.4 amp fuse, and that's that's the to the digit 100% to 100%. We've only got a five, so we got, actually got a little latitude of 1.6 amps to the actually the worst. We we don't we want it down a little bit. You, I would say, don't go in that process of doubling. It does a all right. 
I'm going to back up. Does a 25 kVA take a what size fuse? Five. Uh, five. Does, a 50, does a 50 take a 10? Well, no, because the, the 25 doesn't actually take five. You just said it was 3.4 or something. 75 yeah. would only come yeah, out to like 10.4. But we don't have a six point eight amp fuse. Right. Yeah, fuse, well, I'm assuming fuses typically come like car fuses, like five, tens, fifteens, that you, kind of stuff. Exactly, exactly. Good, good input on that right there. So that's why I'm saying don't make the assumption that if I double or triple the size of a transformer, that the fuse is going to double or triple also okay. because they have that room for latitude. Let's do the math. Uh, hold on a second. I think it's 6.9. 6.9? Pretty sure. 50,000 divided by 72. Yeah. So you came up with 6.9. Well, guess what size fuse they make close to that? Five. A seven. Oh. Yeah. Fuse is going to run three, five, seven, 10, 15, 20, 25. So you wouldn't, uh, I think Whittington was the one asking that question. You wouldn't just assume right off the bat that you would throw, if you have double the KVA, that you would throw double the size fuse inside that uh, transformer, or I mean, excuse, inside that fuse for the switch. Always do the calculation. Yeah, that ends. I mean, that answers my question. I was just curious. But no, no curiosity is is a great thing. I, I I like the question and love giving the answer. So, Robbie, uh, anything more that we need to go through today? I think they're loaded up pretty good with that, um, with fusing charts and uh, transformer sizes. So I think they're good. Okay. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, do you have any further questions? We're going to, there's no quiz today. This, this is kind of, we're kind of getting in depth. I know the math's not that hard, but we're kind of getting in depth of doing things and really essentially, and I'll, I'll give a closing statement here. If I was to go to Santee Cooper, start working today <laughs> and I'll show you this transformer there's a lot of different identification methods say I got a trouble call here at my house and this 25 kVA transformer is hanging at my house I uh, usually <coughs> down here in a big old name tag they've got a company number it's a unique number for every transformer or you got the poll number that the, that the uh, transformers hanging on and I've got some customer complaints and it's either melting or blowing fuses out of it. I can simply just call Santee Cooper and say, I'm at uh, transformer one, two, three, four, and ask them, can you run a load calculation on that transformer for me? And just sit back and eat a, a pack of crackers and drink a soda for a couple of minutes. They're gonna come back to me and they're gonna say, well, that transformer is running peak 40.2. Well, KVA. Well, what's the problem? I got, a 25. I got a 25. Right. Where are they getting their information from? Every single meter that's attached to that transformer, a lot of computer stuff's going on in the background. They're able to uh, accumulate all their bill information and the kilowatt hours used. Then they take the temperature that's outside for the day. They're throwing a lot of stuff into a program that says, yeah, that transformer's been to or is at 40 kVA. All right, I'm outside. It's uh, 75 degrees, it's a calm day. If it's at 40.2 now, and it's a calm day, is that enough transformer for the people that are attached to it? No. No. I'm going to have to upgrade and the next transformer size up is a uh, 37.5. I'm going to have to upgrade. All right. I've also got to take in consideration it's a calm day. So what is this transformer going to need to do in overload? Well, I know a, a 37.5. We'll go to 150% and be able to handle the peak day also. So, I mean, the dispatcher for me really did all the work for me. 
Um, that's Santee Cooper. I'm sure Duke is the same way, right, Robbie? They're close. Yeah, they're they're close. So you give them a little bit of information, they're going to run some calculations for me. All right, I I work for and I'm just going to pull the name out. I really don't know how they do it on their system. I I've spoke with them before about it. Who's interested in PD Electric or working for PD Electric? Anybody? Smaller company. It's a, it's a cooperative in the upstate that, uh, and Robbie can attest to this, even though he works for Duke Energy, my power goes out at three in the morning, but who do they call? Ghostbusters. Uh, they call you at the house. That's right. Yeah, they call you at the house and they say, hey man, uh, my power's out, can you come check it out? Well, the dispatcher is asleep, more, I mean, they're just, they're just not active. You have to be the one that's going to determine, is this enough transformer for the situation I have? And you're gonna be making sometimes some critical decisions. I had a student that called me from uh, Berkeley Electric actually, that they were having some difficulties with the transformer and knowing what size to put, it, put in there because they had a 167 KVA. So you're looking at $16,700 transformer that was melting fuse out of it. And the next transformer <laughs> size up from a 167 KVA is a 333. So you're looking at, uh, you know, making a $30,000 decision in one clip. And they asked me, well, do we need to change the transformer out or just put a new one in there? So I, I mean, you know me, I'm not going to just give the simple answer. I told them to run the calculations of 150%, mm -hmm. uh, refuse it, see what your amperage is on the primary or secondary side, get your voltages. And he ran, ran all those computations right there. And then 167 was doing about 240 kVA. Now, let's run the math here real quick and we'll get ready to close. So. How much will a 167 kVA do an overload? 240, so you do 167, does half of that is, oh, fuck it. Um, <laughs> do 50.5? How much? 250.5, right? 250.5, uh, his conditions down there, he wasn't in peak temperature, he wasn't in peak load. He was getting 240 and the fuse, but it'll do 250.5. So should he have changed the transformer out to a 333? You said it wasn't during peak? Mm -mm. I'd say yeah, right? Yeah. My recommendation was for, for him to go ahead and do so because he, you know, by the time everything gets, and this is nighttime. So you know, by the time everything gets fired up in the, summer hot day or the winter cold night that that thing's going to go over the 240 and it's going to be in the 250 range over the 150 percent so you've got it i mean this guy had been on the class for two years working with two other guys that were brand new and he's making a thirty thousand dollar decision based on math and he made the right one so you may run into those situations out there in the world all right We'll get ready to close here. Right. It's been an hour and a half. Uh, one last question. Uh, there, just to let you know, there will be nothing in D2L today and no quizzes today. It's all a learning day. Uh, what, what is the peak season? Summer or winter? Summer. Yeah. Summer or winter? Summer. 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 Yeah, I'm going to say summer. I'm going to say winter. winter. You know how they base that? Probably off where you live. Not really. They base, uh, you know, the reports that we got all the time, they base it off the temperature. <clears throat> T E M P E R A T. But so I figure, but I mean, depending on where you live, like us in South Carolina aren't going to have winters like, you know, people in New York. <clears throat> uh, totally agreeable and understood. Um, uh, and that's why different companies have different transformer sizing situations as far as their environment is concerned. But depending on where you live and the company that you work for, my question was, what's the peak season? And they do that 
off of temperature that that's probably i don't know if it's 100 percent. i i can guarantee right now i can't look in willison's home right now i don't know what his thermostat set on i don't know how many lights he's got turned on heck he may be baking a turkey i don't know what's going on so but what people do do is they keep a normality <laughs> they keep a normality of temperatures that fit within a certain range and the companies determine their peak seasons to, based off the outside temperature and the normal uses of a person in their home so temperature really is the ruling factor right here so with that i'm just going to throw out some numbers here summertime 100 degrees uh professor v Yo. What's your thermostat set on? It's set on 71. 71. Yep. So he has to make up the temperature of what? 29. 29. All right. Uh, 32 degrees. What do you have it set on the, in the winter? Oh, probably about the same. 71. All right. How much does he have to make up? <laughs> uh, 40 39 39 all right so what's your one's the peak season winter there you go winter. there you go yep it's, it's the makeup of degrees and temperature that you have to do for each individual home all that, right so uh, which question about is. that then or just curiosity again sure so you put in 32 degrees so say it during peak winter you know it's 32 degrees for a week but during peak summer it's 100 degrees for three weeks you know obviously it just flip-flops like even though the number is lower you have more mm -hmm. time during that season's longer so would that that would change your peak season or it's always just based off the number it's always based off the number and where we're where we're going by here is, is uh, 100 is the high for the day or for every day okay and it's gonna, get, it's gonna get cooler at night or yep. 32 is the low for the day and it's at night and it's going to eventually warm every day now i threw 32 in here you can go up north and who's from the north <laughs> like zero <laughs> so you have to make up 71 degrees and understood that's why people go to gas up in the north because it's more efficient right you won't find very many units that's going to make up 71 degrees out of a zero degree day mm -hmm. so you know there's heating and cooling in the process another thing to consider also here as far as transformer damage and efficiency right here of the transformer itself heat in a transformer is going to detract kva we'll get into that that's deep so the hotter a transformer gets the lesser the KVA capability it has. If you cool or super cool a transformer, it's actually able to produce more KVA. But we'll get into that later. So it works more like an engine in that aspect. Correct, correct. That's because the con conductivity in heat is poor, conductivity in cold is very much, and that's you're getting down to the molecular structure of uh things that are going on i'll show you one last picture and we'll leave here okay you see this uh substate uh, excuse me generator transformer right yes why do they have fans on it these fans run 24 7 365. keep it cool that keep it cool the cooler you keep the transformer the more efficient it is and you'll actually see in the in the uh, picture right here these red mm -hmm. items no, I'm drawing a black line. Those are pumps that are pumping oil through radiator fins. And they actually, right here on the upper side, if the oil gets heated too much, that's a reservoir to take the oil, like a radiator, that radiator uh, fluid bottle that you have in your vehicle. It overflows into here, and once it cools down, it flows back in. All right. Nobody sees any input or output of this transformer, do they? you can see the things on top all right that's the output comes from the generating station and then goes out of the uh, transformer so i'm stepping up here where's the input mm. 
pipes. You got it. All right. Inside oh, yeah. these pipes oh, well. suspended is a huge conductor. And guess what else is inside the pipe? Something to keep it cold. Oh. Oil. Liquid nitrogen. So they are super cooling the conductor that comes into the transformer to make it more efficient. Did you guys learn anything today? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I should yeah. talk a lot. <laughs> Robbie, you got anything? Say it again. You have anything uh, more to add? We're getting ready to wrap. Nope, I'm good. Um, we'll post those on um, fuse charts. Yep. We'll post those fuse charts for tomorrow, transformer sizing uh, in KBA, so you know the different transformer sizes in KBA. Uh, Robbie's got the helm tomorrow as far as Z2L, and we're not going to meet tomorrow. So you'll have a news item and a quiz in there. Right. If there are uh, no further questions, I think we'll wrap it up here. Anybody got any other questions? No. So 1230 at the field. 1230 at the field. Uh, I would highly recommend today, if you have not gotten any gloves yet, to get some gloves. Uh, we won't be up high, and I don't expect you guys to be, there's not going to be uh, nothing over your head, so hard hats aren't going to be required, but hang on that cross arm. I would have, uh, I've got a couple pairs, I would have some regular leather gloves, like a mechanic's glove or whatnot. Right. Us. Alrighty. Okay. Easy enough. Easy All enough. Right. Gentlemen, I appreciate it today. Yes, sir. Everybody have a good one and drive safe in the class. All right. All right. See you later. All right, guys. See you later. See you later. Right. Noah, you want to hang? Yeah. Yeah, I'm hanging out a little bit. All right. Robbie, I'll be right back if you want to talk to Noah there. Noah. How you doing, man? I'm good. How you doing? Good. Find out anything yet? No, I've been messaging the lady, but I haven't really had a, any response. Just, response, okay. I don't know what else to do, honestly. Well, you're doing all you can do. We'll um, try to slip in and um, see what we can find out from her. Um, okay. Uh, is there anybody else that I may talk to? Is that, no. I'm not really sure. Well, I'm, I'm sure that um, – Professor Schumacher, he can probably give us a little bit better guidance on that than I do. He's okay. Um, he knows more to, the folks to talk to than I do, but I I figured Miss Bonita would be uh, Johnny on the spot with that trying to get you in. So, right. yeah. But you you've done everything on your end. Yeah, I've, I've sent in my transcript, got all the stuff. I've talked to um, my mom's emailed her a couple of times, but I mean, as far as everything else, that's as much as we can do, I believe. Okay. So, um, do y'all need me to go? Y'all want me to meet you at the field at twelve thirty? Is that you? I mean, do I need to do that, or do you need to wait, or what? I'm good with that. If, if you want to come out there, I'm 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 perfectly fine with that. Yeah, I mean, I just didn't know if there's certain something I needed to do before then. If I don't, if I don't need to. Well, I. Again, let me let me let's talk to uh, Shoemaker when he comes back. But I, okay. I think I'd be fine. I think okay. I'd be fine. <clears throat> yeah. Hopefully maybe we can get a hold of her today and find out something. Okay.
caught part of that on the way out. Yep. No response from uh No response. All right, let me give my email. Uh, I'll apologize and keep this to yourself. I don't know what the deal is there. Uh, I've emailed her multiple times. I've texted her. Oh, I mean, I ain't no problem. I mean, I'm, I don't understand y'all busy and stuff, but. Problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just hang with us. Are you coming out of the field today? Are oh, that's all going that's what I was going to ask you. If, I mean, is that, do I still need to do that or what? I mean, uh, you're in Florence, right? Yeah. No. Nah. You sure? I mean, I can, it ain't a problem for me. I mean, matter of fact, I, I mean, with, without you being on, uh, HGTC's roster, there's a lot of insurance and liability things going on there. So. All right. All right. That's why, that's why, that's why I wanted to make sure I didn't want to. What's your last name? Oliver. He has been speaking with us. Very <coughs> interested in this semester. I'm okay. Okay. Let me get one in here too. Here we are. Robbie, is any uh here's the email. Any word on Noah Oliver? He's been speaking with us and is very interested in this semester. I'm okay with late entry for this one. Anything you want to add? No, just not. Okay. I guess she knows it's very important to get him in. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh yeah. Okay, uh, no, we'll we'll keep pounding at it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just hang tight and stay, you know, within the Zoom courses, and just that way I won't get too far behind. And just yeah, I'm taking I'm taking my notes. I'll get on the Zoom classes and stuff until yeah. I, I mean, get enrolled. I guess. Yeah, as it stands, we're Tuesday, Thursday in the afternoons for uh, the climbing part of it. We we can get you up to speed. Uh, right. If you get in later with with climbing, you look like okay. a pretty healthy young man. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty good. Okay. Be fine. All right, sounds good. Any other uh, questions? Uh, I think I'm good. So, um, yeah, I'll just be in. If I hear anything, I'll let you know. And if you hear anything, just let me know. I guess. Yes, sir. We'll do it. Like I said, our our <laughs> method here is remind. So we'll we'll shoot you remind. Uh, okay. Do you live with your parents? I do, right now, yes, sir. If you could just uh, keep your mom up to speed for me. Her and I have been trading emails back and forth. Uh huh. And uh, so she knows what's going on. Yeah, I know she gets fidgety with that. Well, I, I mean, they've been more than cordial, and it's completely understandable. Uh, yes, sir. Are you the Are you the only child? No, I have a, little, I have a younger brother. Yeah. He always two years younger than me so uh, parents are always wanting to take care of the kids that's i've got no problem yeah. with that all right all right man all right man we'll be in touch thank you all right take care now hey i'm trying to get into this fusing chart but it will not let me open it up share it with me share screen all right well, let me stop